All right, so. guys. Now that we've plugged in Celsius, not a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. this episode is brought to you by Celsius <laughs> Energy Drinks. Yeah. By Celsius. In a store near you. Check it out. It's it's what we run on here on From Screen to Shelf. <laughs> it's truth, though. Yeah. And our shelves are stocked with yeah. Celsius Energy Drink. No, we go. <laughs> yeah, who needs fucking, who needs Blu-rays? Nobody buys that shit anymore. From, from Strange Shelf. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of From Screen to Shelf. It is April 14th at the time of this recording, and we are here to talk about our most anticipated theatrical releases of 2024. We did a video a couple months back uh, where we watched some Super Bowl trailers, and we kind of, uh, or these guys at least, I should say, gave their thoughts on on some of those trailers for the films that we're going to talk about today. And, and we figured, you know, we're, what is it? three or four months into 2024 now uh we've had some big theatrical releases some that we've liked some that we haven't liked so much but we're going to look at the rest of the year and kind of run through uh what's coming out and what we're excited about and maybe what we're not excited about maybe there's some movies uh on these lists that should have never been greenlit or or, or seen the light of day so we'll get into some of that too if we have time but um i think we're all excited for uh for some of the same movies, there, there might be some crossover here between the three of us. But Chase, I want you to start off and uh, with, with your first pick. We all kind of picked a handful. And, and mm -hmm. just to give everybody a heads up, some of us might have picked the same movies because we kind of tend to be into the same things here and there. So yeah. um, just to kind of you know, preface this with that. But yeah, Chase, let's uh, let's have you start off. What's your first pick? So this might surprise some people that it's my number one because I know you guys know, but a lot of people with how much I talk about a different series um, don't realize how big of a Mad Max fan I am. I do mm -hmm. consider Fury Road the greatest movie ever made up there with 2001. So I am – I know some people aren't as excited for Furiosa after the trailer, but I think it just looks like a more modern reimagination with a, different character pieces, and I think we're going to get Fury Road 2.0. I do have that high hopes for it. But Furiosa is my most anticipated release. I'm excited to go see that in Dolby. I'm excited to see how it changes my DNA on a molecular level with the sound design. <laughs> like, I just, I have high hopes for it. Um, now, I, I, of course, I don't, even if it gets halfway as good as Fury Road, I'll be happy. You know what I mean? Like, it does not need to be as good as Fury Road. I'm not going to put that on a movie. But George Miller has very rarely disappointed, you know. Um, he's even, if you Google top 25 action movies of like the last century uh, most people have fury road and road warrior on there so i mean he knows the formula that he's doing he's made two of the greatest action movies to ever be put on screen and with very little budget to to boot on that the practical effects i think that it does seem like there's going to be a little bit cgi in there um but i think i'm fine with that you know um fun fact for a lot of people that don't realize every single thing in pra is practical in fury road except for the waterfall and the dust storms Every single thing, mm -hmm. other thing is practical in Fury Road. So I'm excited to see how they go about it. Um, I'm even kind of curious if they're going to implement Mad Max in any way, shape, or form. Because there's nothing in Fury Road that indicates that those two had never met before. Um, it, they just team up. You know what I mean? So um, I'm just super excited. I think Anna Taylor-Joy was a very good pick for the role. She's a very stoic and stiff actress in, in, in a good way. You know, she has a wide range of emotions, but I think she'll fit the Furiosa character really well. Um, it would have been cool to just get Charlize Theron again, um, even if it was like after Fury Road. But I'm down with whatever his uh, vision is. He clearly had some type of scope for what he wanted to do. And Chris Hemsworth looks like he's going to play a great villain. And I barely recognized him in that trailer whenever I watched that. Yeah. It, 
I barely noticed it. And the nose is just like it threw me off. You know, <laughs> it's a giant ass nose, man. I, it's like it's swollen. Are you like concerned at all about like when when you're saying like you know you want Fury Road 2.0? Like my concern with the movie is I don't want the same thing. You know what I mean? I don't want the same exact yeah. thing of like the first one. Like I think the first one is just so unique with them going yeah. through the desert, and I mean that's pretty much what the whole movie was. You know what I mean? It's just them going through the desert and us kind of being witness to that. I, I don't want to do the same thing again. For I sure, is that that's my biggest worry. Is like. Give me something new. Give me something different. But, you know, within that scope of, you know, uh, the Mad Max universe. Yeah, no, I, I actually agree with you. And I think that's what's going to separate this movie from the others is like Mad Max is maybe the first one has never none of them have been known for a plot point. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They're known for the spectacles, the effects, the, um, the, the visuals, you know, the visual ride that you're in for. Um, and Fury Road's no exception for that. It has a good story that you can dissect, but it's not its not up there. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think that's where Furiosa is going to stand out amongst all the other Mad Max movies because it's an origin story. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have the original one, like I said, but again, that movie could have been summarized in five minutes or less with how much plot is in there. So I do feel like, you know, for him to want to make a uh, Furiosa movie, he has a lot of substance for this character that he really, really, really wants to dive into. So I think we're going to get a good mix of Fury Road. I don't think we're going to have like long chase across the wasteland as much as it's um, because it's still got to tie around and like mild spoilers for Fury Road. Like she worked Im immediately for a Morton Joe and everybody there at the beginning of Fury Road and then broke off to get like his mistresses into the what is it? The the, the Greenlands or whatever it is. Yeah. The green place. The green so place. like, yeah. So like. She she obviously is rebellious based on the trailer, and then she she circles back to some degree. So that's going to be you know a very fruitful story. I feel like I think it's just going to come down to how he more or less gauges the practical effects versus the storyline that he's going to try to present with Furiosa. You know what I mean? So I don't think we're going to get Fury Road 2.0, but I at least want some of the more, um, I would say, like, teetering in the second to third act after they go back from the green plays. I think that's more third act. If we get something just like that at least once, I'm cool mm -hmm. with that. I don't need the desert storm scene. I don't need the blue um, bullet farm leader. You know what I mean? I don't need that scene because they have at least five or six me uh, memorable, like, very practical effects, very intense moments in Fury Road. I don't need that many. If you at least give me two to three, and even if two of them are more mild and then a huge payoff with a lot of this plot strewn in between, I'm happy with that. Yeah. What about you, Will? Because, I, I mean, that's another one for you, Furiosa. It is. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with Chase. I think Fury Road is one of the best action films ever made. It, it's probably, if not one of, you know, the best action film of, of its decade. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think George Miller is a director that knows the world uh of mad max so well i mean this is his baby you know um it, it's it's interesting because i I, th and I think i mentioned this to uh chase or, or one of you guys in text that uh this release will mark 45 years uh yeah. since oh, the yeah. first mad max film so you know this is a franchise that's steeped in history it's it's rich in in character work but but also um just action sequences you know i mean these movies are the type of movies that you look at i mean the fact that and chase you mentioned this fury road with with how little vfx are in that movie again those two scenes with the waterfall uh and the sandstorms that is a monumental achievement to be able to make yeah. a movie like that and it's one of those things that i worry about with this one because this movie does look like it's a little more vfx heavy which i'm not necessarily cautious about that i'm not worried about that um, I'm just interested to see how that ends up looking and how that's perceived because, I mean, and this is also commenting on how great Fury Road is. It, It's one of those movies that when I first saw it, I said, how the hell are they going to follow this up? Because it, it's just such an exhilarating movie. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the plot tends to take a backseat to just how incredibly well done those action sequences are. But that's why I think that movie feels so intense is because a lot of that is real. A lot of that was actually done. They were in the desert days on end, you know, with the elements, you know, all those vehicles, you know, the 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 flame effects and the special effects, all of that was done practically. And, and that's why I think it comes across as so authentic because it is. And um, I'm 
I, I guess I could say I'm I'm curious as to how they're going to be able to replicate that with this film. But at the same time, like you guys were saying, and Gabe, to, to your point, I don't necessarily want more of the same. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is an opportunity for George Miller to tell a slightly different story than what we're used to. Um, but at the same time, maintaining a lot of the elements and a lot of the things that make a Mad Max movie a Mad Max movie. And, and the subtitle for this is a Mad Max saga. So this yep. movie mm -hmm. still takes place in the world of Mad Max. From what I remember, I think it's a 15 or so years before the events of Fury Road. So it's possible that maybe Max will be in this movie. I mean, maybe there there's mention of him. Um, I don't know if Tom Hardy is actually going to make an appearance uh, as uh, as Max, but I think that's kind of the cool thing about the Mad Max universe is that, and some people were questioning, like, well, wait a minute, if if the Road Warrior takes place here and the original Mad, it, George Miller has gone on record to say that these new movies, Fury Road and uh, Furiosa, respectively, there's not necessarily a timeline that yeah. lines up with the original three films. Yeah. Um, and that's the whole point of Mad Max. M Mad, Mad Max is a legend to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. And these movies are kind of interpretations of the legend. And he's gone on record saying, you know, it's the stories of Mad Max that kind of, you know, uh, travel through the wasteland through the point of views of different characters, right? Fury Road is 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 much more a perspective of Furiosa's encounter with Max. Yeah. Um, and I guess I could say if, if there were any criticisms about that movie, it was like, well, it was more about Furiosa <laughs> than it was about Max. But that's the point. Yeah. Mad Max in the world of George Miller is a legend, so to speak, within the wasteland. And it's about people's interactions with him and their retelling uh, of the stories. And so that's why I think this movie can work because it's more so a story about Furiosa and how she came to be the character that we saw in Fury Road. But Mad Max is still very much present in this world. And I feel like we'll there'll be moments in this movie that will touch on that and answer any of those questions as to whether or not uh, he'll be there. So, but I also think it's also uh, an opportunity to tell a much more grounded story that maybe has a bit more character development than what we're used yeah. to from these movies. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm actually looking forward to. I don't need nonstop action sequences in every film. Yep. Um, and, and yeah, it's been quite a few years since Fury Road. So I think, as memorable as that movie was, as memorable as those action scenes were, as Chase pointed out, there's been enough of a a, a break in yeah. time between these releases that, you know, some of that stuff, it's okay if we see some of it again. I just don't want a lot of the same stuff. I noticed in this trailer that there's a whole scene where there is uh, green greenery, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that's something new that we haven't seen from this world before. So I'm interested to see how they incorporate um, new types of landscapes and sets and stuff like that. I I'm curious how they do that. Cause as you said, Gabe, you know, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing once it becomes yeah. repetitive. And that's my only concern. I just don't want it to be uh, like repetitive and, and just have a bunch of stuff that we've already seen in Fury Road. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'm hoping we still get some really great action sequences. I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, of Anna Taylor joy. I think she's fantastic. Chris Hemsworth has really proven that he's, he he's been in a lot of roles that I I've enjoyed, and I, I'm with you, Chase. When I first watched the trailer, I was like, "Dude, that's him!" I, I didn't recognize it right away. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm I'm really excited for this. Um, and, and George Miller, dude, I mean, his filmography, he has not made, in my opinion, a, a bad movie. Uh, you know, people Happy tend to everything. you know poke fun at Thunderdome, yeah, as that's like good. one of the least. Yeah. I guess we could say that's like the least enjoyable or the least reputable installment, but I, I still have fun with Thunderdome and, and Fury Road absolutely blew me away. So I think if anything, I have a lot of hope uh, in this movie, um, even though it seems to be a, a bit more VFX heavy, that that's okay. I'm willing to, you know, overlook that if we have uh, some solid story elements to it. So yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, and I agree with everything that you guys just said. It, it, just to top off the Anya Taylor Joy point, that, that that's the part that I'm excited about the mo the most is Anya Taylor yeah. Taylor Joy, just because ever since The Witch and I mean she's been in so many things, Queen's Gambit, The Menu. Like I followed her career. Like every movie she's she's in, I'm I'm seeing it like day one, just because she's always delivering fantastic performances. So um, mm -hmm. Anya Taylor Joy is a big part of the movie. That's why I'm excited. But everything else you guys said, uh. uh I agree 100%. I'm going in not expecting 
it to be Fury Road. Like, it's just not. Yep. And I don't think it's going to live up to Fury Road. And if it does, you know, then that's going to be a fantastic surprise and, and it's going to be a treat. But if it doesn't, you know, I think we could still get, you know, a, a movie that will give us a good time and, you know, it'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, that's one I'm, I'm definitely excited for, guys. That's a good pick, Chase. Yeah. Have you seen the trailers yet for him? I was going to mm-hmm. ask you that, too, because, OK, yeah, that's that, the only that one you broke not. your rule. <laughs> yeah, I could not. <laughs> Even Maxine, I I didn't dive into it, but like I just couldn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like. And especially, one, it's dude. been rolling before every Warner Brothers thing. But and I mean, I gotta say that trailer sounds insane in Dolby. I don't know if it rolled for you before Dune. Um, well, uh, yeah, whenever you went saw that, yeah, like it did. Yeah, it was insane fucking killer. In Dolby. Yeah, yeah, so I'm excited for that. But that's hands down my number one. Cool. cool. Will. What do you? What about you, man? What's your number one most anticipated? Like looking through this list with uh, what's coming on twenty twenty four, and just to say real quick, like there are a lot of movies coming out this year. I didn't with the writer strike and everything that was happening last year. I thought that this yeah. year was going to be kind of kind of dead, but there's a lot of movies coming out. Well, most of these movies I think were either wrapping or in post production when yeah. that was happening. I, I think next year, like after this, there might be a bit of a lull depending on how things are going. So yeah. I mean, you know, and we can have an episode about that too. We can talk about the strikes, you know, maybe on another, on another day. Cause uh, that's a conversation right there in, in regards to how that's going to affect release dates moving forward. I know some movies have been pushed. Um, some movies, I think they're trying to ramp up production on to get them out sooner, but yeah, yeah. that's a whole conversation in itself. But um, yeah, as far as my most anticipated, I mean, just to give you guys a, um, just to clear the air on that. I, I don't know if there's any one movie that I want to see the most. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll say right off the bat, I mean, Furiosa is a big one. Alien, I'm really excited about. You know, Gabe and I did a trailer reaction to that. I, I'm yeah. stoked for that, especially with Fetty Alvarez. Um, Great director. But this pick, I want to just throw this out there because I don't know if this played before um, any of the recent screenings. I don't think it played before Godzilla Cross Kong, but it did play before Late Night with the Devil. And that is a movie that's coming out, I believe, in May called In a Violent Nature. Have you guys seen oh or heard of that God, movie? Oh, my God. I totally forgot. No, about I have not. Yeah. Movie. <laughs> uh, so, school Gabe on it. Yeah, Gabe. So this is – I'm hoping this is going to be like God. a sleeper hit. Okay? Yeah, this is I a Canadian guess. slasher film um, directed and written by a guy named Chris Nash, who I'm unfamiliar with some of his uh, filmography, but it's it's described as an ambient slasher. Um, hmm. the trailer reminded me of almost like a late seventies, eighties slasher film where I don't know what it is. If it's a zombie, the guy comes out of the ground and at first it was very reminiscent of, of something like Friday the 13th. Yes. And chase, I think you'll agree with that in terms of yeah. the way it's filmed in terms of the atmosphere that immediately got, you know, my juices flowing. Because it was like, okay, this could be like a really well done, almost like a sleeper slasher, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and even the trailer is is creepy. Like it it, it, it had that really dirty, just organic gritty vibe, gritty vibe to it, gritty, yeah. raw, and that really caught me off guard. I was like, damn, this actually looks interesting. And hmm. I don't know, in my opinion, we really haven't gotten that from a horror movie in a while. I mean, that's why I think I enjoyed Late Night with the Devil so well, because it had that kind of more independent, um, low production value. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, it just had that kind of vibe to it. And this movie seems to be in a similar vein to that. Um, but the fact that it's a slasher film, and as I said, this guy just kind of comes out of the ground, whoever the killer is. And the trailer is just him walking around stalking people. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, and there's not a lot else that's out there regarding, you know, info on this. So I'm curious. And it's going to be one of those movies I'm not really going to delve into uh, too deep in terms of research because I'm planning on going to see this. Yeah. Uh, but but that's another one that, that I'm excited for. Chase, I don't know if you want to comment on it. You've you, yeah. you had a reaction when I said it, when I mentioned it. So I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it too. Yeah. The only thing I want to add um, to that, uh, because I did read a little bit about the movie after it rolled for uh, late night with the devil, mm. because the trailer definitely is, is unique. And just for the audience out there that may not have heard of it, the thing that separates this from every other horror movie that's coming out and possibly have came out before it 
is you purely follow the slasher. You purely follow the villain. This is a f- villain's point of view, you know? Um, that's what that's really where my research stopped and I said say less and I'm going to go in and see that Um, so to pique your interest I think this might end up up there depending on execution because that's pretty ballsy because there's a reason you don't get just Freddy you know what I mean there's a reason you don't just follow Chucky or you have human characters to kind of deviate from that path Um, so I really do think that the team had to have had something creative in order to kind of segue it in that manner but if I've got 90 minutes with the villain let's see how that goes yeah, this looks really solid, guys. I, I had no idea that this movie was coming out. I've never seen a trailer for it. It's never played at any of the screenings I've been to as as of now. So mm-hmm. when, when is it coming out? Not May. May, I think. May 31st or the end of May. May is pretty so, stacked. There are a lot of releases yeah. in May. You got uh, Planet of the Apes. You got that. You got... Um, Furiosa. Think, uh, oh, Furiosa. And Quiet Place, too, is in May, I think. I think that, I thought that was summer. Let me see. I could be wrong. Day but, one, right? Yeah, day one. I mean, it looks like a really solid movie. I mean, just the poster itself looks really like <laughs> eerie. And I get the kind of like almost Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes with the poster. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen the trailer yet. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Quiet Place is June 28th, by the way. Oh, June 28th. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's some. But time it is there. still stacked. You've got like two of the biggest year's biggest movies in May. Yeah. You've got like. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Furiosa, and I know there's another one I'm already forgetting, but yeah, stacked. And yeah, Gabe, you definitely are probably going to want to check that out. Of course, you know, Will and I are going to go see that and definitely throw up. And it looks like Shudder. It's a Shudder uh, release. Is it RLJE? If so, that's Shudder. Okay. I think it yeah. is. It says, yeah, that, that's a solid one. Shudder's been on a roll, man. When yeah, and I alert, appreciate yeah yeah like they they've I, I just appreciate they've been releasing stuff theatrically because when you put me onto them i know that you said that it's like a lot of like digital releases but with the like, yeah. late night with the devil and now this like I, I i just appreciate that they are kind of diving into the theatrical realm and and all of their movies are are pretty freaking fantastic i think i've only seen two so far on the platform but um they're really solid man i've, I've yeah. enjoyed what shutters put out so far yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think it's good for the sake of competition, too, that we're seeing some of these smaller companies start to dive into bigger releases, but at the same time, maintaining that, you know, low budget, more independent feel. You know, I I, I love that. So um, and I think in a violent nature, it's one of those movies, like Chase said, it, it's it's taking all the things that are popular about a certain Mm -hmm. genre but at the same time redefining it by taking like a unique approach like like you were saying with the perspective of the killer that's not something that i've seen in in quite a while or i think at all in recent years so um the fact that it's kind of taking that element and deconstructing it and doing something new with it i I think that's exciting so very exciting to see all right Um, you guys are got for your first there's just so many freaking releases coming out man it's hard for me to pick one and we've already done a lot on Alien and Joker. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna let's let's talk about Deadpool because I don't think we've really talked about Deadpool that often. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I'm excited for Deadpool just because Marvel. We we've done a video on it already, but Marvel has just been so dry lately. I feel like they've been like kind of you know subpar and just kind of really boring with a lot of the releases they've had. So Deadpool mm-hmm. is just interesting to me just because it's going to be you know. It's it's rated R, on you know number one. You got uh, Ryan Reynolds. You got uh, Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. Um, and I I just I just want to see Marvel kind of pick themselves back up here. I mean th- that's honestly like the biggest thing that I'm excited for with this movie is just like can they really pick themselves back up and you know go with something that audiences are excited to see again? Because right now with where they're at, they're I, I have no idea what's even going on in the Marvel universe or what their plans are. Cause I know what's his face got arrested for domestic violence. The dude who plays, um, uh, uh Kong, Kang, right? Kang, Kang, Kong. I don't remember yeah. his name. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they're doing away with him and I have, yeah. So I don't know what's going on in terms of Marvel's trajectory. Um, so yeah. this one is, is pretty important to me. I mean, it could just be a standalone fun movie, which I'm perfectly fine with, but I just want Marvel to kind of bounce back up and do something a little bit different. And at least from what I've seen with the trailer, I think that they did give Ryan Reynolds the, you know, hopefully the free reign to kind of just do what he wanted to do with a third installment. 
Um, it looks hilarious. It, and, and just the way they introduce him into the Marvel Universe, it, it looks freaking phenomenal, at least from the trailer. Um, yeah. So that, that that's one I'm really excited for. And I think that one comes out in July. Um, yeah, July 26th. I know they're doing, uh, they're doing reshoots for it right now. So, mm. you know, they're trying to get it. Um, yeah. Which is, you know, I mean, April to July, that's a tight time frame. So hopefully they don't push that back. But um, I'm yeah, to piggyball, so piggyback off of what you're saying, Gabe, this is, and people are well aware of it. You know, there's people making jokes online, like, you know, Deadpool is Marvel Jesus and stuff like that. That's in the trailer, um, I think, though. He even says that. He calls himself yeah, Marvel Jesus in the trailer. Which is <laughs> which is great that they're kind of referencing that. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it tells you that they're very much in touch with what the fan base is feeling. I think to a large degree about the state of Marvel. And, you know, we've talked about this amongst the three of us before, you know, with, with Disney being behind the helm of a lot of these franchises, you know, we've talked about whether there's superhero fatigue. We had a whole episode on that. I think this movie I'm, I'm anticipated for it. I like the Deadpool films. I think that mm-hmm. they're unique enough and that they've separated themselves enough from the other movies in the genre that they stand out uh, in a good way. And you guys have, you know how I feel about that. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think in order to be successful in the superhero genre at this point, you need to establish your own identity as a filmmaker yeah. um, with whatever it is that you're, you're touching in terms of material, right? If you're going to make a superhero film, you have to make it different enough from everything else that's out there. And I think Deadpool has been pretty successful at that. Um, absolutely and and they've also remained true in a lot of aspects to the source material and that's one of the things or one of the reasons i should say why um it, it's so beloved and that you know and people have said that like hey they actually did their research you know and they're they're in touch with what the fans want um and what stood out about the character from the comic books um so yeah, I mean, but it, it you know, I guess we can say financially this movie is going to be a big test for Marvel and, and for sure. in large part Disney. Um cuz you know, we'll be completely honest, like a lot of the superhero films as of late have fallen, you know, quite below not only audience expectations but, you know, critical expectations as well and box office expectations. So there's a lot riding on this movie, you know, not to put any more pressure on them, but I mean, that's unfortunately the reality of what's going on with Marvel right now. So I'm hoping that yeah. this movie can can turn things around and also hopefully send the message to the people that are in those positions of importance and and uh in authority to say hey, you know, this works. You know, we should do more mm-hmm. of this. We should stick to originality and and maybe do a better job of not so much focusing on quantity but more so quality and, and what yeah. separates the good films from the bad ones and you know whatever works we should stick with that and try to build on that and whatever hasn't worked in the past few years like we should try to do away with that and not focus on that as much and focus on what what works and what audiences want so yeah i think this movie will be a big test and 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 i want to see your thoughts on it too chase but just to just to get this in there too i I think it's going to be at least for me you guys have heard me talk about blade a lot i've brought it i mean it's it's a mess like the production for that movie is an absolute mess but I, I really hope that this kind of gives me some insight in terms of wh- what they would do with like an R-rated Blade. You know, if, if if it came out as R-rated. Because like for me, Blade needs to be rated R. Like you can't do a Blade movie that's not rated R. If they release it as PG-13, I'm not going to go see it. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I agree with I, that 100%. I, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I'm hoping they see that it's like, you know what, we can kind of delve into the rated R territory and yeah, if if you if they screw up with this movie and it just doesn't do well financially, and it has Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine, I'm 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 very, I'm I'm going to be very pessimistic in terms of Marvel's future. I, I think they'll probably need to take a break or, or do something because I mean I, I think most people admire Hugh Jackman and and love him in that role. You know what I mean? I think that that's you know some that's like one of the number one things bringing people back to. Deadpool three is 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 Wolverine. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is great with the character, but that dynamic between Wolverine and Deadpool is going to be pretty important. So, Chase, I mean, we we, we kind of talked about Deadpool a little bit. Did you have other thoughts bit. about Deadpool three? Not really. Like, I like the movies. I love the first one. I think the second one. I know some people feel either here nor there about what I'm about to say, but I think the second one took a little bit of dive in a qual in the mm. quality compared to the first one, but it's still very good. Um, I just don't own it because I don't like it enough to have it on 4K, but I have the first one. had a great time with it, um, but I agree with everything that you just said. I think this is going to be 
the biggest, most like leap of faith for them. I mean, they already have a formula. It's not like it wasn't done with Fox. All they got to do is just continue to let Ryan Reynolds do his thing. The creative team that mm-hmm. was on board, they just got to continue to let them do it. And it seems like Ryan Reynolds has a very heavy hand in everything. Like I know he was the biggest advocate for getting it pushed for an R rating. Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, Ryan Reynolds is a very influential person in and out of the films that he is doing. So I think he has a lot of pull. And he's also very active. Like, I only wanted to throw this out there versus what you're saying. Like, they're very in touch with what's going on. And I think that has to do with not just the creative team, but Ryan Reynolds himself, because he's a very active online persona as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He takes in, he replies to people. He's very active in his social circle online as well for the people that follow him. So I think he takes that and really, really runs with it. And so I think they're going to really, really push to make this different. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if Hugh Jackman Wolverine can save it. I'm not mm. sure. You know what I mean? Because um, I think a lot of people will go out of curiosity, but also at the same time, like, you know, we're familiar with Logan. We grew up with Hugh Jackman as yeah. like Wolverine. Nostalgia. Exactly. So I, I, I know our generation, our audience, like, you know, from like us and up are really going to be excited about that. But the reason I say I don't know if that'll necessarily be the biggest push or draw is you have a much different younger audience that didn't necessarily grow up with him as Wolverine. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, like, of course, I'm sure they got their hands on it, this and that. Um, you have Days of Future Past. Um, what is it? The uh, the first class and then Apocalypse and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that might be differentiated for a big majority of the audience. You know what I'm saying? Um, because like that last one, Dark Phoenix, I don't think did well at all. Oh God, dude, um, that movie was garbage. Just want to preface by saying that I did I not like that movie. <laughs> I haven't seen Days of Future Past or um, Oh Wow Apocalypse. I have them, but I I I, I saw first. Your class stack. I, love I, <laughs> I have no reason to not watch them. I heard Days of Future Past was great. I heard about oh, it's fantastic. Uh, has Oscar Isaac of all people playing his equivalent of Ivan Ooze from the Power Rangers movie. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it looks good. I I just don't know if Hugh Jackman coming back. Like, it does seem like it's going to be a little multiversal. I've heard rumors of like Juggernaut and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, if it is a bit more multiversal, I think they're going to be kind of leaning a little bit too heavily on hey nostalgia. You know what yeah. I mean? based on the rumors I've been seeing circulate, but that's just my opinion. I'm excited for it. I'm going to go see it opening night and, Mm -hmm. of course, Dolby, if it releases that way, it has to. What movie are you not going to see in Dolby? Maybe you should everything by saying that. (laughs) Yeah, everything that gets a Dolby release, that seems like it's warranted. Because Dolby's like 15 minutes for me to get to, and then I have a movie theater about nine minutes for me. So if Mm. it doesn't, like, Late Night of the Devil, I went to see the the one that was nine minutes away. We should do that. I know this is off topic. We should totally do that IMAX Dolby debate. Because I mean, after I saw Dune Part Two and Dolby, yeah, I, I think I still, oh. <laughs> I still prefer IMAX. But nope. we, we we could probably do a Dolby IMAX debate. It'd be a two on one, man. You really want to do that? Hey, I'll do it, dude. I'll, I'll stand behind IMAX one hundred percent. Two Celsius in hand. <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree with everything you said. I think you know all of us are are pretty excited for Deadpool, and it and it's yeah. cool just to see Ryan Reynolds, you know, doing his thing with no filter and you know the reins aren't really on him and like you said he's kind of in control with what's going on so i'm I'm hoping you know it does well and i'm wishing the best because i i do i do want marvel to kind of bounce back because it's been you know ever since infinity war man it's or endgame i should say it's just been kind of it's been dead Very so man. yeah that's that's my pick you know deadpool 3 uh super excited for a trailer looks good and i'm sure we'll all be seeing that opening night anyway so um chase i think we got we got time for another round yeah another most anticipated movie that you got on the list and i already know what this one is dude i i could be wrong but (laughs) so no it's so i definitely want to shout it out but i don't really because i really don't have much to add to the conversation versus once because i refuse to watch the trailer and i know both of you guys have seen the trailer already no Um, i'm talking about the other one (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah so shout out maxine is my technical second most anticipated will but... and i are probably going to talk maxine here in a second I yeah have a feeling. yeah <laughs> so um that is technically it i just i refuse to watch the trailer so i really have no nothing to add to it so i something i do that is my entire persona i am the embodiment of this individual but song for hedgehog 3 <laughs> i yep. i am so stoked <laughs> it's got an awkward ass release date though december 20th when is it I, December 20th. 
it's a really awkward um, release. It's almost as awkward as Nosferatu coming out on December or not on December on Christmas Day. But yeah, that's a, Sonic that's the Hedgehog weird three. week. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, dude, this is going to be the Avengers Endgame of Sonic, man. I kid you not. Jim Carrey is coming back as Eggman, dude. And then you've got freaking Shadow in there, bro. And then you've also like <laughs> next week, you've got uh, Knuckles coming out on Paramount+. Plus. Dude, I'm just so excited, man. Look at how ex- look at it in his eye. You can see how yeah, excited dude. he is. Man. <laughs> his eyes are like out. glimmering right now, dude, man. So funny. <laughs> it, it, when I went and saw, because I think I were, uh, yeah, yeah, it was before we did this. When Sonic the Hedgehog 2, people on the server probably remember, I'd be like, yeah, going in. I was always in the Now Playing channel posting <laughs> like for a week straight. I saw it like five times in Dolby, man. It's just so good. Like, there's just something about like spoilers for people that haven't seen Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because there are people in this world that have not seen that movie. Shame on you, by the way. So there is a part towards yeah, Will, you've seen Sonic 2, right? No. <laughs> yeah, that was about to say. I don't think Will's seen no. it, man. <laughs> no I was about way. to do that this thing. Man like, not oh, yeah, shame it. on those people. <laughs> you haven't seen it? No, I haven't seen I've seen the first one because you told me. You to really watch the first picture one. you could picture Will sitting down and hitting play on yes. Sonic Hedgehog 2, like on his own <laughs> without you telling him to watch it. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> it's just such a good movie, man. It's just like because, like, okay, so let me preface, like, why I am so excited. Like, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, I was going to go see it regardless. It's Sonic. Mm-hmm. I, even if it was just a rip on the movie and, like, have a riff tracks moment in the theaters. Because mm-hmm. that trailer looked so bad for the very first one. And, I yeah. mean, even if you did still had that very ugly Sonic design for Sonic 1, that movie still would have been good for what it was. It just would have been hard to overlook the really crappy design because that movie really had no right being that good. It yeah. really didn't. It was... At worst, a 6 out of 10. It was a very good, family-friendly movie. Kids had to have absolutely loved it. And it was one of the last ones, other than Birds of Prey, that came out before the pandemic shutdown of the theaters, right? Right. And it did monumentally well for that. It did absolutely well. I think it broke even on its budget, if not made a lot of money, because it did like $220 million in like less than a month, which is crazy, before the shutdown. So yep. then you have Sonic 2 that really picks it up. And then, you know, you have an ensemble. You have Knuckles, Tails um sonic and then eggman coming back at it and then a huge huge payoff moment at the end where you have like you know just an iconic moment from the video games happening like i kid you not i'm not afraid to say it but like that's one of the few times i've ever shed happy tears in the movie man during that iconic moment in the last 10 minutes man like i was just the kid in me could not contain it the joy i felt from seeing that was just unreal like there's just something so magical about sonic the hedgehog 2 and then just you're going to have even more scope. And, and the fact that Jim Carrey is coming back as Eggman and Sonic 3 is just insane. And then we have the Knuckles um, show. I think it's – let me shout it out for people that remotely care. Um, <laughs> that remotely care. Remotely. <laughs> I got to see when it comes oh, out. Um, I'm sure there are one Knuckles, or two Sega fanboys out there that are – Oh, man. April 26th. <laughs> so it's right around the corner. So I'm super stoked for that. Yeah, super stoked for that. And it, it's supposed to to bridge everything. And Idris Elba kills it. Um, Knuckles is just a giant goof in that. And yeah, man, it, it's just one of those things. Everybody has that like childhood memory and that childhood mm-hmm. associated thing. And Sonic the Hedgehog, for people that um, aren't on the server or haven't gotten to know me over the last few years or you just tune in, you cannot fathom how big of a Sonic fan I am. Uh, like I literally have so many collectibles. It takes up a portion of a certain room where they all are. <laughs> I have so much Sonic stuff, man. It is unreal. I am a mega, I even have the Sonic cookbook. Like I've never cooked out of it, but I even have a Sonic. Hell yeah, I do, Jesus, man. That's fucking Tells hardcore, you, dude. Bro, I'm hardcore <laughs> Sonic, man. It's literally like my you imagine obsession. like Chase in the kitchen with like a Sonic apron. And oh, like bro, cooking from the and Sonic even a Sonic cookbook. hat, like a little, you know, the 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 you little fucking- Sonic. You go over his house and it's like he serves like cake. It's like a fucking Sonic the coin cake. You know, like the top <laughs> of the cake. Like, like a giant bun cake. ring cake. It's like, here you yeah. go. I just get um, him a Sonic awesome. onesie and cook that way. I just feel like it embodies it a lot better. I feel like I, I will move faster that way. I will say, so So Chase had me, I think it was like a, like six months ago. He he recommended I watch Sonic and and I I put it off for a little bit, but then I finally like took the deep dive and, and it, it, they are fun movies. I mean, I, I'm not like a, a huge Sonic fan like you are. I played the games growing up, but I'm not like a fanatic mm. about it. But yeah. um, they're not bad by any stretch of the imagination. They're they're pretty funny. And there there was a few moments that made me like chuckle. A lot of like pop reference themes that they bring up of like, you know, mm. stuff that's going on now that that made me laugh. So 
uh they're not bad movies by any like if i had kids like this they're they're great to bring kids to you know what i mean like they're really really fun movies um i mean they have their typical you know predictable story situations but they're not bad um i i'll i'll probably go see i think we were joking about this before rolling i'll go see sonic 3 on a matinee on a Saturday yeah. morning, maybe if I get like a free coupon ticket or something, I'll go see it in, in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> You'll sacrifice your time for it. Yeah, it, it's not yeah. bad. Will Will's like, damn it, am I gonna have to watch Sonic the Hedgehog? Sonic too. He has to. <laughs> no, I'm gonna have to. No, I'm I'm willing to check it out. I mean, and that's the thing about those movies. And I'm with you, Gabe. Like, I I played the games when I was younger. I haven't played the games in quite a while, but yeah. you know, I know enough about the the world of the games that you know I, I, that was eminent. You know, with the first movie, it was it was very uh, you know that was palpable to me. It was it was recognizable. Um, mm-hmm. and I liked the first movie. You know, uh, unfortunately, yeah, it got a lot of flack when that trailer came out. I think that turned a lot of people <laughs> off to it initially, but. Mm-hmm. I, I think if you know people are willing to look beyond that, it was a fun movie, and I feel like I'll probably walk away from the second one with the same feeling I did with the first one. Like you know, it was enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It is unlike Chase. I don't think it's something I'm going to own on on 4K. Oh, absolutely. But it, it, <laughs> I, I feel like Chase feels the way about Sonic that that Gabe feels about like Chris Nolan films. Or, oh, absolutely. Or, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You know, um, and that's the thing, though. Like, Chase, your enthusiasm is enough to make me want to watch the second one, right? And, and that's like the it. thing that I love about it. It's like the fact that you're so passionate about it, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot for that reason alone, just because you think it's great. And, you know, yeah, I, I think the second one is probably going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I try to look at these movies, too. Like, I'm not walking in there expecting this to be, like, a cinematic achievement. Yeah. Because that's, that, that's <laughs> not do. what it's set out to be. It's set to be a fun <laughs> movie that people can enjoy and, it, you know, that will, yeah. you know, resonate with, with younger audience, especially younger kids. So I'm not going in expecting it to to blow me away. I mean, I'm just going in there to have fun. And but Chase I, I took that approach to the first <laughs> film and walked away with it with a pretty good feeling about it. So I feel like. You know, as long as I stay in that lane in terms of my yeah. expectations, that I'm I'm gonna walk away with it. You know, you know, with with a good Happy. attitude. So yeah, yeah. Chase is gonna come out of part three and be like, this this is the supersedes two thousand one. It's like <laughs> <laughs> the greatest cinematic achievement of all time. Yeah. I mean, if they keep up the trajectory, like fun facts, I was actually completely wrong about the first one. In less than thirty days, um, not including re releases, the first one. Ninety million dollar budget made three hundred nineteen monumental success. The yeah. second one, hundred and ten million dollar budget, four hundred and five million box office. So if they yeah. give them a little bit more, I don't really know what the third one is going to necessarily entail in regards mm-hmm. to budget if it's not already out there. But yeah. like, it, I mean, it's just if they just keep building, it's the same team that's been on it through and through. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if they just keep up and keep doing it and know what they're doing with what they tease at the very end of on the post credit scene for the, yeah, there's no budget for the third one out right now. So if they just keep it up, like it, it's literally the same director. And I mean, he's did yeah. one movie before the Sonic movie. So I'm extremely impressed that they mm-hmm. gave him this. They did that. They in. Again, I have to respect that creative team for listening to fan demand. I do still believe that it was a troll to gain to garner attention. I do believe. I I, I do not believe that they reworked that entire movie. Credit mm-hmm. to them if they did. Monumental credit. Not trying to take that away. But the negative attention that that received was just so crazy. And they reworked the whole movie so fast. You know? Much yeah. respect to them for doing that. If they really did do that. And it wasn't just an April uh, Fool's Day joke. Tinfoil hat. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> that Sonic, there's no way somebody looked at that Sonic and said, that's our Sonic. You know what I mean? There's no way. I mean, way. someone looked at the Dune popcorn bucket and said, this is a good idea. <laughs> hey, that's, I was actually going to mention, dude, I was literally going to mention that. Like, there are people that are involved okay, with some of these productions that there it is. are not, not sh- that shouldn't be. And that's the no, thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I know... It's like, oh, there's no way that someone okayed that. But, like, look at a lot of the stuff that they have okayed. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly the thing. It's like, mm-hmm. why would this, like, why would you think that that would be a good idea? But it, it's yeah. happened time and time again. But, Chase, I think what you said is crucial, that you have the same creative team behind yeah. these movies, mm-hmm. movie to movie. I think that's integral for consistency and the success yeah. of the franchise overall. Instead of, 
like we saw this with the Godzilla movies, like having different directors come in. Like, you know, if you yep, find yep. somebody that works and, and knows what they're doing with the material, just just keep them like just, yeah. you know, pay them what you need to pay them to keep them around and keep them making more if, if they choose to do so. You know, I think yeah. that's one of the biggest mistakes with a lot of these franchises, especially franchises that are coming out um, in such a short amount of time. You yeah. know, it's one thing if years and years go by, I get, okay, bringing a different director to the table. But like even the MonsterVerse films to, to quote, I mean, that's the most recent example I can think of where they've had different directors. Um, you know, the last two installments not included, obviously, because Adam Wingard directed both. But um, I just think that that's one of the biggest things behind it is to just make sure you have uh, the same team, you know, behind it, especially if the first one's successful. <clears throat> Again, don't change what isn't, don't try to fix what isn't broken right yeah, so absolutely uh, you know that's pretty much what i'm trying to say there just maintain consistency i think that's integral to uh you know being successful so yeah absolutely yeah i saw that one coming <laughs> oh did you Sonic. yeah i was like that's your name. i thought it was unpredictable sure. on that one for sure no man i was like that's coming <laughs> you know that chase is gonna pick sonic what what about you will uh your your second most anticipated movie of the year uh, I don't know if I want to drop Maxine or if I I know Gabe that was probably one of your picks as well. <clears throat> yeah, I have not seen the trailer yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean we can talk about it. I mean without I, I won't mention anything that happens in the trailer, but uh, we can just talk yeah. about what we're excited to see with Maxine. There's things I've been told, and I also don't want to spoil it because if Chase is not going to watch the trailer at all, I, I'm going to try mm -hmm. to watch the trailer. Maybe I'll do a trailer Never. reaction, but. I don't want to. I don't want to give anything away to Chase in regards to plot points because yeah, I've been no, told I'm, there was one thing that I was told that actually raised my eyebrows. Like, oh, that's a very fucking interesting angle. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I want to talk about that. And no. I don't know I, much about I, I, yeah, I'm not going to talk about any plot points. I, I all I'm going to say is I, I from the trailer, and I'm not going to mention anything that happened in the trailer, Chase. So you're good. you're good. <laughs> um, I will say just the take. Like it it took a, a turn that I was like, whoa, this is like. Like this is going to be really interesting. Like so, it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. very different from part one and part two. But I think it, it, it honestly, it, it, that's what excites me about it. it. It's kind of hard to kind of keep going. You know, you have Pearl, you have X, and it's like, how can you maintain this trajectory of, you know, especially with, with what's already happened with Pearl and X? You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you're you're following this character, and it's like what are, what are you going to do for you know to finalize this trilogy so to speak i don't know if he's going to do more after this but i i, I get the I vibe not. it's a trilogy yeah i yeah, hope I it's don't, just a trilogy um, but yeah when maybe you see the trailer times. man and we maybe we could do a reaction video on it but it's really it, it i was kind of i had a mental i guess like picture of what this movie was going to be and the trailer just <laughs> it, it annihilated that it's like completely different but honestly i loved the trailer I'm like this looks fantastic. Wow. So that's great. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. He took a, a hard left turn, and and I'm like I'm I'm down for you know to enjoy the ride because it's not yeah. what I expected at all, and it's really really cool the way he kind of places Maxine in a very specific setting. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm super stoked for it. I think it comes out July. July fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Like. So something I want to add, like, because I folded for Furiosa, and you'd think if I folded for Furiosa, I'd fold for Maxine. But the reason I want to go in as blind as possible, I didn't even watch the Sonic 2 trailer whenever it dropped. Um, <laughs> and that's saying a lot. But, like, Furiosa is just that important to me to come out nine years later. So mm -hmm. the biggest reason I don't want to watch the Maxine, I want to go in as blind as possible, is because this quite possibly has the potential to be the greatest horror trilogy of all time. Um, and I will stand by that, you know, um, X wow. to me is better than Pearl, you know, um, I know that's a hot take. Pearl ha definitely has the better performances, but I think story-wise X is better. Um, mm -hmm. Pearl is better in every character development angle. So I'm very curious on just the day I sit down and watch it, what they're going to do. I think the, the more blind I go into this movie, the better my chances are of not really superseding that like perfect trilogy, you know, approach. I just have faith in Ty West to deliver everything because it was originally going to be X and Pearl. So for them to sit down and Mia Goth has a hand in writing these, um, all of them. I think yeah. X was more so Ty West, but I think Pearl um, was a lot more Mia Goth and Ty West, mm -hmm. um, even mm -hmm. though they were shot side by side. <clears throat> so um, Maxine definitely has that potential. Um, I'm excited for the, the placement of it. I really don't know anything other than the cast members in there. The casting looks incredible for yeah. the movie. Um 
I'm excited for a, a, a good score, especially with the setting that it's in there. I have a feeling Ty West is really going to deliver that for whoever's doing the music. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Maxine, it's it's definitely my second most actually anticipated. Uh, it's just I, I really don't know what to expect, and that that's really why, like to your your point, Gabe, I already have this image of kind of you know, but like I don't I don't want it to get changed because if it's going to get changed, I want it to get changed when I go and sit down and watch the yeah. Game. You know Fair what enough. I mean. You just yeah. front to back change it. Yeah. And it's it is Mia Goth. I think she's gone on record saying this is her favorite screenplay <laughs> out yeah. of the three. Yeah. So she said this yeah. is definitely her favorite one that she's read. So um yeah, it I mean, I, I really enjoyed the trailer. I mean, well, we could maybe do a reaction video if we get some time later during the week, but um yeah. definitely I think it will shatter people's expectations when they see the movie because I think everyone just has their own kind of perspective as to where Maxine or where the character can go. Um, and I love how Ty West just, just, he's like, screw you guys. I'm just doing what I want with her and <laughs> yeah, I'm putting her in the situations I want to put her in. And I think he's accomplished that. So I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What are your thoughts, I think we got to remember too, that a 24 is behind it. And again, mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that they've allowed him to have the creative freedom that he's had with these movies is, is great. And the fact that they've been so successful is, is fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, I think we'll, maybe try to get a trailer reaction in for that because i'm excited for the trailer but i'll if there's going to be more trailers i'm only going to watch this one because i I don't i don't want to know too much i Um, i agree with that i don't think i'm going to watch any other trailers yeah yeah Uh, i mean honestly ty west and chase i don't know if you agree with this he's probably one of my favorite directors working today within the horror genre i i just think he's come such a long way from from house of the devil that was the first movie that i ever saw that he's done yep um and then i think Innkeepers I think he did name. a segment in the first VHS film as well. Yes. Uh, and ABCs of Death. Yeah, ABCs of Death. And then The Innkeepers, I think, is one of the best, like, slow burn movies that I've seen, you know, from the time period that it was released. I think that's an awesome film. Um, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, he he is honestly struck gold with X and Pearl. I just think, and I agree with you, Chase. I think X overall is the the better movie, technically. Yeah. Um, mm. I like Pearl more because I'm I'm really a fan of, Mia Goth's acting in that movie. I think it's such a great character study. So it personally resonates with me a little bit better, but Absolutely. I'm just stoked for Maxine. Um, and the fact that it takes place in the, the mid eighties, I mean, that is right in my ballpark. I love, I love the eighties as a decade. I love it as the setting for, for movies. I'm a big slasher guy. So the fact that yeah. th- this is where the trilogy is, this is the final installment and it's, it's gotten to the mid eighties, which is the slasher era, you know, mm-hmm. um, is is really something that has me super excited for this so yeah that's pretty much where i stand on on maxine sweet yeah and then just to throw this out there x and pearl were filmed on a million dollars combined isn't that wild wait about that yeah wait say that again x and pearl work filmed on a million combined budget of one million dollars that can't be true yeah (laughs) google it fact check me (laughs) Google it, bro. There's no way, dude. That, they were I filmed can't. back to back. They they gave him, as yeah. far as I'm aware and how I understood it, because they also talk about it on one of the behind the scenes on one of the discs that I have. They filmed them back to back because they were given $1 million. So he made two movies out of that and filmed them side by side. I think he technically filmed X and would film bits of Pearl in between everything. Huh, there's an article saying that they don't think that that's accurate. Hmm. I, mean, I mean, we still don't know Godzilla Minus One's budget. Yeah, but, no, for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, there there are articles saying it, but there's also articles disputing it. So I I don't know, man. I don't think you could make both of those movies on a million dollar budget. I mean, they they definitely have the the setting that would lend itself to you know it's just like an X. It's pretty much the house, and I mean you're at the same house again for Pearl. So yeah, maybe you know what I mean. I mean, Mia Goth would have had to take a big pay cut for Pearl to keep that. that or they just banked on box office bonus. Because some people yeah. sign their checks away that way. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's interesting. I'm going to kind of do a deep dive on that. Because that, that's, that's to me, a, a, a cinematic achievement in and of itself if you're able to make both those movies with a million-dollar budget. Because yeah. it wasn't, wasn't – Saw, the original, was a million-dollar budget, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure, I yeah. I think so, yeah. That was made on a million-dollar budget. So, And the, both of those movies look better than Saw <laughs> yeah. did. Uh, so I, I don't know. I got to take a deep dive. I'm definitely intrigued hearing that, though. Yeah. Um, I think we got time for one more. I'll pick one more anticipated. And it's 
it's kind of hard. Let me, let me do some honorable honorable mentions here, guys, because there's so it. many freaking movies coming out. Obviously, Quiet Place, Day One. I'm super mm-hmm. stoked for that one. Um, uh, Bike Riders with Tom Hardy and Austin Butler. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited super excited for, for that one. Yeah, that yeah. one looks just, you know, I think if you're into motorcycles or kind of the Sons of Anarchy kind of deal, I think that that mm-hmm. one's going to be a solid one. And Tom Hardy's performance looks freaking incredible from the trailer. So... I'm definitely excited for bike riders. Um, Wasn't that one shelved just out of curiosity? I think it still back? says here. It says release uh, 2024, so June 21st, 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it got pulled in 2023 out of the 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 strikes. Yeah. they've oh, been. What it says here, yeah, they're still advertising it in theaters. So, like the the okay. trailers. So, it, it's definitely slated for this year. Okay, so, cool. yeah, because I, I remember there was some controversy where they like it got pulled from the schedule and people thought it was like shelved, even though like the trailer mm. had already came out and everything. I just remember yeah. seeing that on our box office or something, our movies, and yeah, so that was curious. Yeah, um, I just name some other honor- honorable mentions Nosferatu, which we kind of already touched on a little bit. Yeah, that one's I'm, I'm super stoked on that one. Um, let me see here, there's a, there's so many coming out, man um no one for, i know a lot of, of the apes. huh you didn't mention kingdom of the planet oh yeah of the kingdom apes, of the planet of the apes dude i mean that one as well dude there are just so many movies coming out this year uh you guys had mentioned long legs um oh yeah before Osborne we were rolling yeah so that one looks pretty intriguing um i'm not looking forward to gladiator 2 but maybe we'll do a video on that or i'll do a video on that because that's that's a weird one I, this one's kind of out of the box for me i'm just gonna because i want to talk about it with you guys i don't think we've ever mentioned it uh is beetlejuice uh because oh, yeah. we did release the the trailer for beetlejuice i think a few weeks back and we never really yeah. talked about it so it. You, oh you haven't seen it are you gonna sure. watch it or no i'm gonna go watch the movie i love the original but the trailer though oh no i'm not gonna watch the yeah trailer. i'm just gonna go see it <laughs> um yeah i mean what, like so I, I saw the trailer for beetlejuice and honestly i think I, I I was very much against the sequel to, to Beetlejuice because I really love the original. That's one I kind of, uh, Chase and I were talking about, you know, movies that we had on, you know, VHS that were stacked up near the TV that we'd always play as kids. So they're just running on rotation. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Beetlejuice was one of those. It'd literally be Batman, Batman Returns, and Beetlejuice. And I would have those like just on rotation as a kid. And Beetlejuice... I I love that movie, dude. It's it's phenomenal. It's it's such a great fun movie to watch. And I was kind of against a sequel for a while. Um, the trailer kind of changed my mind on it. Um, I don't mm. want to. I'm not going to delve into the trailer too much, but um, okay. I really like the take that they have with the trailer. Uh, they really have an angle with that 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 kind of makes it a little bit more plausible in terms of coming back. Um, so, and Michael seeing a glimpse of Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice again is it's freaking fantastic. Like, I mean, he's, he's so good at just jumping back into characters or just jumping into characters in general. Um, like it's nothing like, I think a lot of people really, you know, mentally kind of like take it on as this kind of challenge. And the way he talks about it is like, dude, I'm just doing another movie role. Like when he did, you know, Flash 1989 Batman, he's like, I'm just jumping back into, you know, something I felt like I was doing yesterday. Um, that's and amazing. that's how he kind of feels about Beetlejuice. So um, I'm excited for it. I'm going to check it out. It, it, it has me really intrigued after the trailer. And that's after not wanting the, the film uh, after mm-hmm. it was announced. So uh, that's where I'm at with Beetlejuice. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on Beetlejuice or, or the release coming out later this year. Chase, did you want to go first? Yeah, all I really have to add to that is I love the original. Shout out to the 4K disc on there. It's one of the best Mm -hmm. out there. Um, That is an immaculate transfer, a a restoration of love from front to back. It's one of my favorites to really show off like a familiar movie. Mm -hmm. That in Wizard of Oz is like, okay, what what movie? Wizard of Oz or Beetlejuice? Cool. Put it in and showcase, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I absolutely adore the movie. Um, I didn't really, it wasn't that I ever didn't want a sequel. It's just something I didn't know I would want. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I didn't know if it was necessarily a world that needed ex- expanded on, but yeah. I mean, with the way that the movie ends where he has like, I mean, I think even the poster, I, I remember the poster, he's got like his ticket number and it says next yeah. up because he was like so long in line. From the yeah. It was like first 14 movie. million or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like now he's next up in line. So, I mean, that they could literally just pick up right off of that. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Yeah. Like they, they, they have it a, a back door to go off of, and it is a very rich universe. I just think personally they had explored it so well where I didn't really want 
or know that I wanted them to expand on it. I guess you could say it's not like I I'm not, I'm against it or didn't know I wanted it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go see it day one though. Dolby, <laughs> dude, we should get a sponsorship from Dolby at just this Dolby. point. <laughs> just Dolby. I'm just gonna the send you a shirt that just says Dolby. Dolby. He could wear it. I'm gonna get him one of those fucking plaques that you throw on the wall. It says like the Dolby Cinema. Oh, certified. Yeah. Lettering plaque certified. <laughs> Yeah, right over the he's gonna summer. have it right over there by the tripod or by the, uh, yeah. the midsummer poster. You just put yeah. it up here and it spins. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably gonna see it. I mean, I, I haven't watched the trailer for it yet, and it was one of those movies when it was announced. I was like, yeah. I mean, I don't need another Beetlejuice movie, but yeah, the first one is such a favorite for me growing up as a kid. You know, um, it, I, I think for me it's gonna be pure nostalgia bringing me back, but. I'm stoked about the cast. I think, you know, the fact that they got, I mean, I'm going to miss Gina Davis, but um, the fact that Catherine yeah. O'Hara is back, you know, Jenna Ortega is fantastic. You know, she's been on a run lately in recent years. So I I'm had no idea she was in that movie. Honestly, I, yeah. that surprised me when I saw her in the trailer. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. So, and I think she's going to kill it. Um, you know, the fact that Willem Dafoe, I think is attached to it as well. And Monica Bellucci. Mm. So it's, it's, it, the cast is pretty stacked, you know, and if, if what you're saying is anything to go by Gabe, I mean, yeah, the fact that Keaton can just jump right back into the role, like it's nothing and, and, you know, convince people that it's the same character. I mean, that's, that's amazing. So yeah, I mean, I'll mm. probably end up seeing it. Um, I, I know it went through a lot of reshoots and like production woes, you know, when it was being filmed. So I'm, I'm hoping mm. that, you know, it was for the right reasons. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably see it in theaters, but as far as like my excitement level for it, uh, I'm just going to go see it because it's Beetlejuice and, uh, I'm not like stoked about it, but I'm, I'm hoping that I end up enjoying it. So I'm more excited it's after the trailer. I think I was kind of like where you were, Will. Um, I, I mean, I didn't want it at all. And then when I saw the teaser poster, I was like, you know, like I'll, I'll go check it out. But the trailer def- definitely kind of pumped yeah. me up a little bit more for it. So we'll see. And I didn't realize Tim Burton's returning. I didn't. I thought mm-hmm. it was just somebody else, but that's cool. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I liked it. I mean, I, I don't love everything Tim Burton does. Um, there's definitely, he has a lot of <laughs> misses in his filmography that I really don't enjoy. But uh, when he does hit the mark, I think he does a fantastic job. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, his highs are high. And I, I haven't really seen any of his low points. Like I heard his Planet of the Apes movie was trash, but I've never seen oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's that bad. <laughs> don't watch it. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. With a uh, Marky Mark. Yeah, I was about to say, but it's got Marky Mark in it, man. How can that not be yeah. redemptive? Marky Mark isn't a god, bro. <laughs> he can't save everything. Um, but yeah, Mark. I mean, there's so many movies, guys. I mean, we honestly, we have a list here and there's just so many. I, I wanted to talk about Spider-Man, too, because I heard that was maybe supposed to come this year, but I'm pretty sure it's probably delayed until are they, next what year. What about um, no Marvel? Because are they doing Beyond the Spider-Verse? I remember hearing something about that, but mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if that's started. not decided yet. Yeah, they, so it's supposed to be two parts, but they haven't even started work on it because they wanted to take two parts. Rate. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, it's a two-parter. It's oh, beyond. Man. It's the next yeah. one, like what Will said. But it was supposed to go into immediate production, and I could be course corrected on this. But the last thing I read was that it was so intensive getting that second one done that they need a break. Wow. So Damn, it's dude. probably going to be about two or three years till we get part two. Oh, that oh, that man. kind of like honestly turns me off a little bit because like the way the second one yeah. ended, where it's I the, know, the, the second one ended almost like a part one. You know what I mean? So when you yeah. tell yeah, me that they're going to jump into a part one, part two. Oh yeah. wait, it was announced so wait, that way though. So the third one. Okay, so wait, just to clarify, the third installment is going to be broken up two. into two parts. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So the, across is part one. Okay, in, gotcha. In, yeah. Yeah. Across is part one, beyond is part two. It was okay, originally gotcha. just gonna my be bad. called part one and then across part two. Oh, okay, but my bad. I thought you were saying they... the third installment they decided to split it up, and I'm like, no oh, way, no, no. dude. Okay. No. no, no. Okay. I'm I'm good yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't need <laughs> a again. Yeah, three three parts. That would have yeah, right. that would have messed everything up for me. So yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be a solid one whenever they decide to release it. But um yeah we'll we'll maybe do another video like as the months go on just because i'm sure that there's going to be other movies that pop up on you know on this list that we overlooked or we didn't really talk about so uh maybe in a few months from now we'll do a follow-up um to kind of talk about other theatrical releases we didn't really touch on yeah absolutely that sounds good to me cool as always guys we appreciate you guys for watching uh like comment down below let us know what movies you are most excited for this uh this year um i think there's like i said earlier a lot of movies coming out this year that i really didn't anticipate to be you know so 
so booked every month with theatrical releases but uh let us know what you guys are excited for down below um and we always like corresponding with you guys and responding to comments so uh feel free to leave comments down below and as always we appreciate you guys for watching thank you guys so much thank you everybody